You're watching Granada Men and Motors. Welcome to Drag Power. I'm John Price and I've been involved in drag racing in one way, shape or form and hot rodding for at least 20 odd years. And it's my pleasure to welcome you along to our weekly programme, investigating the world of drag racing and test and tune. And last week we were looking at motorcycles. Well, this week we're going to have a little bit of a change. And for those of you out there who are four-wheel fanciers, then this has got to be the programme for you. Now, drag racing always takes place, no matter where it is in the world, on disused or currently used airstrips. Northwood Aerodrome, to the northeast of London, in Essex, is the venue for our Maitland Racing Stealth Products Test and Tune Day. Now, the whole concept of this emanates from America in the 40s and the 50s, where the youngsters used to take their custom cars and their hot rods, utilising all the early V8 engines which produced so much power, instead of taking them onto the road illegally, they would take them onto a disused airstrip. And this is exactly what we're doing here. Northwood Aerodrome, of course, a highly recognisable name if you're an aeroplane buff, a famous World War II fighter base, with a nice stretch of runway, which of course lends itself to hot cars and hot motorcycles, going out and flexing their muscles, showing what they can do. Now, even the rain doesn't dampen the enthusiasm of all of the people that turn up here at North Weald. And indeed, overnight and at the start of this morning's event, there has been a, a downpour which really should have made everybody turn around and go home, but not so, our hardened enthusiasts. Cars are for unloading, cars are for racing. And we've got some quite extraordinary vehicles here from big V8 engines to people using motorcycle engines in their go-karts, classic Americans. This beautiful SS Camaro, closely followed by a Dukes of Hazard Dodge Charger, pickup trucks, and even British tin. They're all represented here at this fabulous day. Now, of course, what we're looking at here is a proving ground, if you like, for somebody who intends to start drag racing. This is an ideal opportunity. If you've built a special in your garage over the winter and you want to come out and see exactly what it does, it could be American, it could be a kit car, it could be absolutely anything. This is the place to try it out. Well, the rain has stopped. That's good news because when you're producing some of the horsepower that some of these monsters produce, you do not want to be slipping around in the rain giving your version of Tallville and Dean on an ice rink. And once the marshals consider that the track is dry, then they call the cars through onto the racetrack. Exhaust pipes getting hotted up as they get ready for their first adventure out here on the quarter mile. And you can already see that the track is getting dry and the crowd have come piling in to watch all of the action. Let's have a word with the man who puts it all together here at North Weald, Tony Huck. If you can see this developing further, how would you like to see it grow? We would actually like to do more events. We only get the airfield three times a year. It's actually a, a fully active airfield for the other 362 days of the year. And uh, so we would like to be here more often. Obviously, we're weather dependent, uh, as are, are all sort of drag race type events. But we'd like to move forward. We work with some of the street car clubs uh, and with custom cars and classics and things. But it really is about bringing as many types of street bike into the format as, and, and street cars as we can. So what got you into this then? Oh, I've been doing this for about 30 years, right? you know, um, at 67 I think I started with an escort band. Uh, yeah, it must be that. And um, 
we sort of, I've just carried on and on. I've had about sort of seven or eight American cars and different uh, bits and pieces. Uh, but we've all, we've all sort of known each other for years and we've all sort of just carried on together. It's, um, it's one of them sports that you get into and you never want to get out really, you know. The only difference between, you know, men and boys is the men's toys are dearer than boys' toys, aren't they? So, you know, you just keep spending out. It's a money pit. This is the high-rise manifold all chromed up. You've got the, um, the twin hollies, 450 hollies, and the bug catcher on the top with the filters inside. All, all the engine, every, every nut and bolt in there has been um, chromed and like, plated. Um, the, the, the fan and that has all, all been powder coated. Um, we've, we're, as I say, it's just come back from the spray job, so it's a bit dusty around the edges, but, but it will be polished up. When I was in America, we was in a Corvette shop, and um, the guy, every car that he builds, that's his paint uh, sort of scheme. And I said to him, like, when I get to America in England, can I do, would you mind if I... So he said, no, no problem. So I've had to send photos out to them and they've put it up on the wall and... Uh, but uh, everybody loves it, you know, it's just so, so, such a bright colour, you know, you know, you can see it coming. Well, the reason we've got so many fantastic looking cars at this particular event is that not only is it a test and tune day here at Northfield, it also incorporates the 21st running of Gary's Picnic. And Gary's Picnic, set up in the 1970s, I was there at the first one, was all about bringing hot rods and customs out onto the drag strip. And this is what we see here today. There are prizes up for grabs for the quickest eight-cylinder car, six-cylinder car, of which this is a good example, just passing in front of our camera lens, and four-cylinder cars. And there's also prizes going for the best-looking car. Now, I wonder whether this classic American Cadillac, all fins, chrome and lights, together with old glory, will stand a good chance of running away with one of today's prizes. Now, earlier on, we did mention that people use Northwield as a possible testing place for future involvement in drag racing. Let's have a word with one of those people from South East London, Thamesmead, in fact, Winston Sewell. I decided to build one myself at home, so um, it took me about three years to build. Most of the three years I spent on the car um, with no special tools at home completely. It's a Ford Corsina 1981 two-door. It's got a 5.8-litre V8 Mustang engine in with a ton of ram, nitrous oxide injected, uh, 16 and a half inch wide tires on the back. And I say, the, the, the whole tube, it's just a Scorsina skin that's put over that full tube chassis, it's just bolted to it. You have to be dedicated if you want to do it yourself and get in the garage, otherwise I know people that take some 10, 15 years to build a car, whether it be a race car or a rod, because one or two days a week in the garage won't cut it. Well, Winston certainly proving there that you have to apply yourself to produce this type of race car. And believe it or not, Steve Bradshaw's car in the 70s used to be a mini cab. Well, I used to go um, to Crystal Palace racetrack when I was about 14, 15. Um, and I saw my first racer there, it was the Allard Racer. Um, and really, since then, I suppose it was always in my blood, but since I saw that racer, I just. I knew one day I'd, I'd actually get into the school. There's a three by two inch uh, box section steel chassis that runs from the front to the rear of the car. Uh, there's a 12 point roll cage inside the car, which is all tied in to this assembly here. Uh, a person strut suspension, um, engine wise, as I say, it's a small block Chevy engine, aluminium heads, uh, Brodix track one heads, uh, GMC supercharger which runs at about £12 a boost at the moment. That's, that's altered by changing these pulleys. Uh, and the injection system is from BDS in the States. Yeah. It's uh, capable of uh, producing 1,000 horsepower, but in this particular uh, instance, it's about 600 horsepower. Well, the car certainly is a fine example of Steve Bradshaw's spraying ability. And that supercharger sitting there on top is mirrored in our next car. 
This is a Willis Coupe. Not only is it a show car, it's a go car as well, used on the drag strip. And the owner, John Clayton. Probably making around about 700, 750 horsepower, then about another 200 horsepower with a nitrous. So it's got to be the meatiest car here today, isn't it? Well, I like to think it's one of them anyway. The car run on in good conditions. The car will run nine fours, 150 mile an hour. Well, what a fantastic looking machine that is, and uh, built specifically for drag racing, reacting to the Christmas tree. But we've been looking at some of these V8 cars, so let's come a little bit more up to date and move into four cylinder cars. And this beautiful little Vauxhall Corsa, owned by Gary Lovelace. It's the whole shell's seam welded. It's got Weber Alpha fuel injection, um, high lift cams. It's all. Built, it's all lightened and balanced underneath, I think. Um, it's got a different gearbox, different diff, and all sorts of stuff. Different brakes, different suspension. Goes so, when, on and on. so when you need it looking at, you don't take it to the Vauxhall dealer? Yeah, everything's <laughs> most of it's Vauxhall, yeah. It's not too bad. <laughs> Hopefully it won't need looking at. <laughs> it's pretty reliable so far. Top speed? Um, about 145, I think. Did he say 145 miles an hour? Not for the faint-hearted, I think. The test and tune goes on. Don't forget, we are... Hey, that's a Fiat 126. Underneath the hood there, a 350 cubic inch Chevrolet small block engine. And does it move? You bet it does. Everybody's looking for their quickest times, of course, to fit in with the Gary's picnic format. And here's an interesting shot. We've been looking at Gary Lovelace's Corsa, and here it is, the stretch of the years over the Vauxhall family with this earlier 1970s Vauxhall Cresta running alongside the Corsa. Well, we're just coming up to our break here on Drag Power. More four-wheel action from Northwield and, of course, Gary's Picnic coming right up. Don't miss one single second. It's Chubby's brand new video. The world's most hilarious comedian finally goes all the way. Chubby's funniest video ever. Buy it now. It's Damon Hill as you've never seen him before in wild and wacky races. 100% pure motorized mayhem with the fastest, maddest and baddest machines around. This is outrageously fast racing. Blink and you'll miss it. Damon Hill's wild and wacky races. Buy it now on video. <laughs> If you want to make your man jealous, buy yourself a Brands Hatch gift voucher. Or why not buy one for him and turn him to putty in your hands? Phone the gift line for details on 0870 10 20 300. Either way, you can't lose.